Welcome back everybody to part 11 of our Unity Beginners Tutorial Series. I'm so glad to have you back with me today and a special welcome to all new subscribers. Thank you very much for taking the time to check us out and for your support. Last episode we expanded on our game by creating and adding more levels for our players to enjoy and progress onto. I hope you had fun with that and went wild with your creations as today we are going to be playing with power by adding one-ups and power-ups to our game. However, before we begin, make sure you're all prepared by downloading the assets needed for this tutorial from the link provided in the description below. So go ahead, get prepped, grab your coffees, and let's -a go! Okay, so with the assets downloaded, you're all prepared, ready to go, and let's add them into our project. To do that, go to our sprites folder. You can either right click, import new asset and find the files there, or you can open them up and just simply drag them into the project like so. Once they're in, click on it. And don't forget we have two sprites on here, one for our one up, one for our power up. So that makes the sprite mode multiple. There we are. Pixels per unit of course, is 64, because they are 64 by 64. Click Apply, and then go to our Sprite Editor to prepare them. And to do so, go to the Splicer up here. We don't want Automatic, we want it by Cell Size, and as we know before, with our Player Sprites and Level Sprites, it's already set to 64 by 64, and Slice. There we are, we have our one up and our power boot. So you can go ahead and name those now. We will name this one one up. There we are. And we'll call this one speed boot. Everyone likes speed boots. And then when you're ready, hit apply at the top. Exit that. Now our power up and one up sprites are ready to go. Now that's out the way, let's click and drag our one up either into our hierarchy or into our scene. Don't forget to reset its position to make it easier to work with. And what are we going to need as this is going to be an interactable object, our player is going to make contact with it and it's going to increase our life value by one. So we're going to need a Collider 2D of course. So add component, Box Collider 2D will be suitable. Let's zoom in so we can see it a little closer. And using Edit Collider, I would like us to reshape our Box Collider so it fits our sprites a little more neatly. There we go. That'll do, that's fine. And once that is done, Exit Collider. And we're gonna to want to do one more thing. We want to make it a trigger. So click is trigger in order for the effects to take place. Now, Let's go to our scripts folder, create a new C sharp script that we're going to call life up. And when it's ready, go ahead and open it up and let's get cracking. So where to begin? Like we said before, when we make contact and collect our one up, we're going to increment our lives value by one. And we're going to do that using that very function in our lives manager script add life. So the first thing we're going to want to do is to make a reference to our lives manager script by at the top saying private lives manager and call it the lm for short and then in our start function state what the lm is. The lm is equal to find object of type and in the pointed brackets of course we're going to put our lives manager end with brackets there and a semicolon. Then I want you to go ahead and get rid of our void update as we are going to use an on trigger enter 2D function in the exact same way that we did here in our player controller for when we hit spikes. So go ahead and type in on trigger enter 2D and where it says collision, go ahead, change that to other so we know that when we use other, we're referring to the other game object. Then underneath, let's state what we're going to collide with. 
So if the other dot game object dot tag. So if the tag is what? What we're going to collide with? Of course, the player. So if the other dot game object dot tag is equal to, so if it's equal to something, don't forget we use two equal symbols. And in our quotations, type in the name, the player. And again, spelling has to be exactly as it is in our project. And underneath, let's write our function. And we are simply going to say that when we collect it, the lives manager dot add life function takes place and ticks our life value up by one. And one last thing, our one up has been collected. It's been exhausted and therefore we have to get rid of it. We don't want it hanging around. Otherwise we can just constantly hit it and get infinite lives. And that's game breaking. We don't want that. So underneath it, simply say destroy. And in the brackets, what object is it we want to destroy? Well, it's this, the one up game object. So we type game object. End with your semicolons. Let's save that now. Let's go back into Unity and put it to the test. Once you're back into Unity and your script has compiled, we can go ahead now and attach our life up script to our one up game object, position it wherever you would like in your scene. I'm just going to put it above there. Go ahead, press play to test, walk over to our one up and ding dong, there we are. Our life has been increased by six and our one up has now been collected. Happy days. Let's go back into Unity now. And knowing that our one up works, we can create a prefab. So drop that into your prefabs folder so we can go back through our scenes and add one ups where you feel appropriate. So have some fun with that. But before we do, let's create our final power up and that's our speed boost. So let's prepare our sprite, drag in our speed boots and do exactly the same as before. Reset its position and add a collider to it. Box Collider 2D. And of course, resize it to fit. This is nice and square, just like so. And then when you're ready, make it a trigger. There we go. And that's ready to go. So let's go into our scripts, prepare another C Sharp script. I'm going to call this one Speed Boots. There we go. So go ahead and open it up. Now, how are our speed boots going to work? Similar to our one up, except we're not going to affect our lives manager. We want to affect our player speed as we're going to multiply our player speed by two. So first and foremost, let's make a reference to our player. We'll go private, player controller, the player, nice and simple. And let's go ahead and state what that is in our start function. So the player equals find object of type player controller. There we go. But before we go ahead and write our on trigger enter function, we're going to want to add one more tiny detail to our player controller. As multiplying a speed is fine and the speed will be multiplied for a fixed duration that our power up lasts, we're going to want to revert our speed back to a normal speed, a default speed. So underneath speed, type another public float and we'll call it default speed. So let's say that when we collect our speed boots, our speed is going to be multiplied by two for a duration of three seconds. And then once three seconds is over, reverts back to what the default value was. And rather than state what that default value is in the editor, we can just do it in our start function. And we'll say that our default speed equals the speed, what we've already set our speed as. Job done, nice and easy. Save your player controller script. Let's head back into speed boots. And now we can go ahead, remove our void update and replace it with an on trigger enter 2D, change collision to other, Nice and simple. And like before, we're going to type the same thing. If other dot game object 
dot tag is equal to player in quotations. What's going to happen? Well, we've already stated that we're going to multiply our speed by two over fixed duration. We can set that duration in the speed boot script, or to make it easier, we can add a public float, or we can call it duration up there. So we can choose what we want it to be on the fly in the editor. Now think for a moment, what have we used already that has a duration? Our game over screen. And we did that by using an enumerator and coroutines. So that's exactly what we're gonna do here. So underneath our on trigger enter 2D function, let's type out our enumerator, IE numerator. We'll name it speed boost. There we go. And what do we say is gonna happen? Well, when we collect our speed boots, we're gonna multiply our player speed by two. So let's type out the player dot speed. And to multiply it, we will use an asterisk equal two. So we're gonna multiply it equal to the value of two. Then underneath, we're gonna have our duration. So yield return new wait for seconds. And in the brackets would be our duration. There we go. And then once the duration is up, we want to revert our speed back to default. So the player dot speed equals the player dot default speed. And of course, we would have collected our power up. So we want to also destroy and in the brackets game object. Now, some of you may have guessed that this will cause a little problem, which I want to show you. So let's first, before we go back and test it, in our on trigger enter 2D, let's start our coroutine. So start coroutine in the brackets and quotations, speed boost. There we go. Save our code, hop back into Unity. And once again, when your script is compiled, attach it to our speed boots. And while we're here, let's give it a duration of three seconds. Go ahead and place your boots wherever you would like them. I'm gonna put them before our one up. And when we press play now, you will see what the problem is. We collect our boots, but they don't immediately disappear until our duration is up. Do not worry, we have a solution for this. So let's go back into Unity and click on our speed boots. And you'll see we have our Box Collider 2D component and our Sprite Renderer component. We are gonna turn those off when we collect them, yet keep our object in the scene. So it's still there, just we cannot see it and we cannot collide with it. So much like we already know we can do by turning them on and off, activating them and deactivating them, we are gonna do that exact same thing in our code. So let's go back into our script. And what we're going to do is in our speed boost enumerator, we're gonna make a reference to those components we want to deactivate, set as false when we collect our speed boots. And to do that, we simply type in get component and inside the brackets here, we're gonna write sprite renderer, the component that rends our sprite. We have some brackets at the end, dot enabled equals false. So we're gonna turn it off. And underneath, we're gonna do the same again. This time, we're gonna get component and it's gonna be our box collider 2D. Make sure it is the correct collider dot enabled equals false. There we go. So it will be still in the scene, just that we cannot see it and we cannot collide with it. We've turned those off. And then when the duration is over, it will delete and remove the object from the scene. So let's go ahead and save and give this a whirl. And when everything is ready, hit play to test. And we should see now, yep, there we go. We collect our speed boots, we got our boost, and after three seconds, we're back to normal. And of course, we deactivated the collider, deactivated the sprite renderer, so it looks like it's disappeared. Happy days. Let's go back in now, guys. And as we are now happy with our speed boots, let's go ahead, create a prefab. And there we go. 
And that is it, ladies and gentlemen. We have now created our one-ups and our power-ups for our project, so you can now go ahead and add those wherever you like, in whichever scene you like. Have fun, because soon we're going to be throwing some enemies into the mix to spice things up a little bit. Thank you very much for joining me, guys. I hope you're having a good time following along at home. Please, any questions, let us know by hitting us up on our Twitter or Instagram page. Also, any references you need in the description below are PDFs for the code and the assets we used in today's tutorial. And if you see the worth in what we're doing here, guys, please, as always, consider subscribing and supporting the channel below so we can bring you more tutorials and projects in the future. Take care, guys. Have fun.